Yo, JD here. And as you can see, we are back on F122 as always. But in today's video, we're actually going to be discussing something a little bit different. And that isn't about the gameplay you can see in front of you, but instead about this upcoming F1 esports season. Because we are about to start it very, very soon. I believe it's on the 14th of September, so not too far away at all. And I just thought, in case you're living under a rock, you don't have Twitter or the internet or... Well, you must have the internet if you're watching this, but you know what I mean. If you don't have any of these details and ready, then I thought I would bring you up to speed. And if you like me to do videos like this before or after every F1 Esports event, just giving a recap on what's happened or maybe even doing some watch-alongs of the F1 Esports series, then please let me know and I will be doing that. So, yeah, as we enter this F1 22 season, this is actually the sick season of F1 Esports. I remember the very first one where they actually went to Dubai, the Yas Marina circuit. I was actually there for the very first one, actually spectating, then took part in the second season myself. But now we actually finally have some key details of the upcoming events. And there have been a few changes that are things that people have been wanting for quite a while. And it's actually good to see. So the first changes are really the structure of the event. So it's still four events, but previously it used to run across two days. Now it's over three days from my Wednesday to Friday. And I know from being there myself as a driver and a member of a team that two days to do three races with three different qualifying sessions was quite a uh, grueling process and I think many of the drivers can uh, attest to that as well so now you have every day is just going to be a separate race and a qualifying which allows the drivers to actually focus so much more each day just on one track and I think that's what we want to see as well we want to see drivers performing the absolute best for each track rather than whoever is really the most mentally fresh um, if you have to do two tracks in one day and that means we're going to have more live streams as well so there's actually going to be six streams they're going to be showing, showing the qualifying live um, I don't know if it'll be every race live I imagine that won't be the case because I know Gfinity like to pre-record usually the first race just in case there are some issues that go wrong during the race which there has been many of those <laughs> in the past including someone's live if you watch Canada uh, a couple of years back with Jan Watmir and David Tenitzer when we had that desync. Yeah, those kind of things happen quite a lot. So yeah, I don't imagine every race will be live, but I think for the drivers, this is definitely a much better fit. Another thing is that now the race distances have changed from 35% to 50%. And I think this is everything that we have wanted to see for quite a few years now um, especially in the F1 community because I think a longer race allows for more opportunities for the driver just through their driving skill but now actually more strategic opportunities itself because a 35% race still really did feel like a bit more of a sprint rather than an endurance so I'm hoping it will provide a bit more strategic um, action itself and give the chance for drivers who maybe don't qualify on the front row to still make up some good positions and actually do something in the race. I have heard that the safety car will still be turned off though. Um, we haven't had the safety car on ever in F1 Esports because it frankly just doesn't work. And so I imagine that still will be the case with this, which is a, a little bit of a shame itself. And I believe the formation app might also be off as well but changing it to 50% races instead of 35 is definitely definitely a much welcomed thing and yeah I believe that on this game it will this game is really really hard to actually make up positions and um, from a low grid position mainly because of the obviously the tire ruling 
Um, you can start on any tire, which you could do in esports last year anyway as well. Um, but I think really with the tire models, and if you're starting on a hard tire, or if you're starting on a medium tire and going to hard, there isn't really so much of an undercut, and the degradation is quite similar. Plus, with how the ERS works, it's much, much harder to recoup the battery now, so you can't just keep on using ERS over and over again. It's really, really hard to recover, and the lack of the DRS power as well. I think having a 50% race just gives the drivers much, much uh, more time. So, yeah, that's definitely good to see. Another thing is the calendar has now actually been released, and I have seen a few comments on this, and I have to say I agree. I do feel it's a little bit underwhelming because we have 10 of the 12 uh, tracks that we had last year so 10 of them are still the same the only ones that have changed are Portimao which we actually do have in the game now and China which is not in the game but is probably going to be added to the game at some point so it's pretty much almost a complete replica of last year's F1 esports event and now for me I'd just like to see just some differences in the calendar and um, just make it a little bit more exciting I don't know if they choose these tracks because they think it's the best for racing or now, personally, I'd love to see Miami, um, a brand new track in here, um, but maybe they don't want to have two American tracks in the same calendar. And also the Australia circuit, uh, I would love to see that. So, yeah, but let me know what you would change. What would you change the calendar to? What do you think would make it more exciting? But I think they should definitely try and change the calendar up a bit more on a year, uh, year to basis. Uh, but one thing with the dates, although we have three separate days now for the race days in each event instead of two uh, the actual first day of the final event which I think is on the 14th of December actually is on the same day of the World Cup semi-final and the World Cup semi-final I think starts like probably an hour two hours before but it will definitely be overlapping so I don't know if that'll have so much of an impact but um, that is just a thought and another thought as well is just with the calendar I think they could have really maybe utilized the sprint mode function that we actually have in this game now. And that's definitely something I'd like to see. I'd like them to see use more features of the game that we don't have the safety car, not really going to be using the formation map, and we're not using the new tracks apart from uh, Yas Marina. Apart from that, um, I'd like to see them utilize the game um, a bit more, but maybe they're just not confident <laughs> that the game will work uh, properly um, within that. But Aside from that, it's really who do you think is going to win this year's F1 Esports? And that is a question that is going to be very hard to answer, especially since it now appears that the F1 Esports build is quite different to the regular build of the game, which I wish they didn't have to play on a different build itself. But I know from last year's build, um, that the esports build was slightly faster because you could actually run uh, less kilograms of fuel in the qualifying. Uh, speaking to some of the drivers, they did say the handling was slightly different as well. When considering we've had these issues where I did my video on the FPS confirming that is the case, um, there are other issues when it comes to the refresh rate and other things, I'm sure, within the game. I think they're, they've made this build so everyone is running exactly the same graphic settings because that does have a pretty big impact on performance in this game which we have seen uh, so far so yeah just let me know what your thoughts are on that but obviously if it's different build it could be very different from what we've seen on the regular game and in the regular game so far we have seen certain drivers performing uh, very very well so although it's going to be very hard to predict who's going to win I would say a top five in no particular order would be the following drivers. Um, I would say Lucas Blakely. Um, he's, he was in the championship battle last year. He's had the experience now of winning races. And I do believe so far in the league racing scene that he is the best performing driver so far uh, on this game. I think he's very, very hungry to get an F1 esports title. As I said, he's had that experience of being in the championship fight until the very last event last year and I think maybe with a bit more support around him with the team he's in which is no doubt going to be McLaren <laughs> this year then 
I think if he can keep his composure and keep his emotions in check, then he seems to be clicking with his game very, very nicely. I think another driver is going to be Barry Boromund, arguably the fastest man over a lap. And again, if he can maintain his composure, then I think he can very much put himself in the fight. I'm not sure if he actually won a race last year, but I think he had the av highest average qualifying position. And as I said, I think qualifying on this game is going to be one of the most important factors for this F1 Esports series. Um, now with the races extended 50%, that dis does give a little bit more opportunities, but I do think with the nature of this game, it's really, really hard to make up positions, mainly just because of how the ERS balance works in terms of how hard it is to recover it, how there's a lack of slipstream and a lack of DRS. And with the tyre model, I think you need to be starting in the top three or five if you want any opportunity uh, to be winning a race in this series. And that leads me on to Mr. Jan Watmir, current esports champion and two-time esports champion I believe he will perform when it matters. I think he's probably the smartest driver in the series itself. And I think we've seen that for the last two years. And I think if there was only one weakness of Jarno, although he is still absolutely rapid, it is the qualifying and sometimes executing it when it matters. And I, like I said, I think in this game, you need to be qualifying well. So I think if he qualifies well, he's he's going to win esports or if he can qualify in the top three each time then I think he's going to be right there but if he can't get in that top five consistently then it might be a little bit more of a difficult year than the previous two years so on this game so far he hasn't looked the most comfortable I think in the last couple of races he has got up to speed a little bit more I know he has a lot of commitments outside of playing the game as well so hopefully he has had more time to focus on this and I think if he does, and if he does the qualifying well, then there's no doubt he is going to be in contention. Another person is Frederick Rasmussen. Very similar to Bari, I think he's one of the very, very best qualifiers and naturally talented drivers. I think the only thing that stopped him from winning an esports title is him just being more aggressive and sometimes just needing to be a little bit more selfish rather than a team player himself, um, which is obviously good, but... I think if he just had a little bit more aggression, then he could have maybe even picked up an Eastwoods title already uh, himself. And then I think the other driver who no one is probably really thinking of at the moment is David Tenitza. He has always been in contention for race wins every season he has ever done. I think he's one of the most talented, naturally talented drivers that I have ever seen on a sim racing game or just a racing game in general and he's a bit of a dark horse because you know, no one's really seen him play this game but we didn't see him play the game in I think 2018 when he won his or 2019 when he won his uh, first title and I think he's had a lot more time now than he did last year to prepare for this game and if he's going to prepare well he's got Brendan Lee as a benchmark as his teammate then I think he's going to be right there 100% and of course there's other drivers such as uh, Danny Moreno uh, Nicholas Longay Marcel Kiefer uh, I think they'll all be in the mix as well and no everyone could be in the mix but I'd say probably these five drivers have proven in the past that they can maybe go through to the very end so yeah let me know what your predictions are for this F1 esports season I'm actually very very excited to watch it um, to see people performing at this kind of level and yeah, although it's just a video game, the amount of work that goes into this and the amount of stress that these drivers are under as well, it's absolutely insane. And yeah, to be this precise and any mistake you make in this series just gets punished by a hundred times. So I really hope you are enjoying looking forward to this series as much as I am. Please let me know if you want me to do more videos such as this as well. Thank you so much for the support on the channel and I will be catching you very, very soon. Peace.